Peter, if you spoke it, let there be light. And there was. The prophet said, God believed his own way. If you can't receive it, I will receive it. If you can't aim and eat, I will aim and eat. I'll say glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me to church. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me to the meetings. The meetings have already started. Take advantage of this. Before so many people come in, take advantage of it. You know, Zacchaeus was just along there at the sycamore tree. It was not a crowd of people. Some they want to get in the spirit because they are seeing a lot of people. Get in the spirit because you are hearing the word. Get in the spirit because you have read the word of God. You are hearing the word of God. That must drive you to say amen. That's enough to make you shout hallelujah. Thank God for the service tonight. Thank God for the pastor who had this burden and the inspiration to arrange the meetings. Wherever there's a sacrifice, there's a blessing. You know, there was a lot of money which was put into this. I want to see the value of it. I'm one person who really looks at the value of things. The amount of money that we put, are we going to get something that, which is equivalent to what we have done to it? Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. It's not 10 rand which was put here. It's thousands and thousands of dollars. People must be healed here. People must be set free here. People must be delivered here. People must receive the Holy Ghost here. We must see Jesus. Says we will see Jesus. Sound engineers, don't let me down, please. If you're having a hard time, I can come and lay hands on you. If, if, if it's hard. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm talking from the book of Kings here. My title is, Father, let the fire fall. That's my title. Father, let the fire fall. And you say, let the fire fall. You shout, let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Father, we have done everything according to thy word. You have said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We have come to the other part of the world. We have come to other corner of the world. Father. Do you agree together with me? Father. Let the fire fall. So when the pastor said he didn't know that, that's my title. And where am I getting it from? From kings here. Elijah came a time where he was supposed to meet with Ahab. It was a showdown time. It was a showdown moment. Let it be like, let it be to you today. If you're in a situation bring it to the services. If you're in a condition, bring it to the meetings. If you are sick wherever you are, come to these meetings. Come to the Mount Carmel of today, to the message of the hour, and see who is God. Your situation, which is trying like to take an upper hand in the word of the Lord, let it be known today that the Lord is God. There was no rain at that time. And Elijah, the spirit of the Lord, came to him. Listen on verse 1 there. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go shoot thyself unto Ab, and will send rain upon the earth. God was fixing to do something. And he doesn't do it outside the order of his word. He doesn't do it without a prophet. For surely the Lord God will do nothing on earth except he revealeth his secrets to his servants, the prophets. As he was about to bring the rain, 
He said, Elijah, I want you to go and show yourself to Ahab. Then he met this guy by the name of Obadiah. I think there. Then he says, where is Ahab? Go and tell Ahab that, behold, Elijah is here. Amen. And Obadiah says, ah, oh, man of God, there is no place everywhere that we have never looked for you. We looked for you everywhere. The king was looking for you. Every corner, every house, every street. And you were nowhere to be found. Then Elijah said, I have come. Go and tell him that Elijah is here. Then this man said, it will come to pass that when I'm going there to call Ahab, then when we come back, maybe the spirit of the Lord will take you, carry you. You are just a man of God who is carried by the spirit everywhere, every time. So you 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 put my life on the block. On the block. You put my head on the block there. You put my life on Jehovah there. When we come back and you are not there because he's really looking for you. He's actually angry for you. He's angry about you. He really is looking after your life. Then he says, there's no way I'm going. I'm here for a showdown. The spirit of the Lord has brought me down here. I want to see him. Let's make a showdown. It's a showdown time. Bring your situation and tell it that tonight the spirit of Elijah is here today. The spirit of Elijah has come back to the church. The Lord God of Elijah has visited his people again. The Lord God of Elijah has come back in this generation. The Lord God of Elijah, the one who brings the rain, the one who makes things happen, the one who heals the seeker, the one who delivers, the one who answers by fire is here tonight. The Lord God who answers by fire, the Lord God of showdown, the Lord God who who delivers uh, the Lord God is here tonight. Then Ab came and he said, Are you the one who has troubled Israel? He said, No, I've never troubled Israel, but you have done it because you have forsaken the ways of the Lord. You have done it because of wicked ways. You have troubled Israel. You have troubled God's people because of your doings and the way you do your things there. But let it be known, how long shall we live between two opinions? How long shall we be between, shall we be between two opinions? If the Lord be God, let us save him. But if Baal be God, let's save him. Bring all your 400 prophets. Let's go to Mount Carmel there for a showdown. Bring all your people. Bring all the wish doctors. Bring all the soothsayers. Bring all your challenge there. Bring your situation. Bring your disease to church. Bring your condition to the message of the hour. Bring your high blood pressure to the message of the hour. Bring your sick child to the message of the hour. Bring that epilepsy to the message of the hour. Bring that high blood problem to the message of the hour. Bring that migraine headache to the message of the hour. Bring that situation to the message of the hour. And I want to say to you tonight, uh, bring it to these meetings. Uh, whatever condition you are in, uh, come with this uh, to these meetings. We want to see whether your condition will stay or the word of the Lord, uh, which like as a hammer, will break it in pieces. The word of God, uh, which is like fire, will destroy it. Uh, the word of God uh, will destroy your problems. Uh, the word of God uh, will burn uh, your problem and your condition in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let me tell you, my brother. Let me encourage you, my brother. Prayers have been made. Uh, fastings have been made. Uh, monies have been paid. Uh, the war has been hired. Uh, the instruments are here. Everything has been done. Uh, the altar is repaired. Uh, Father, let the fire fall. Father, let the Holy Ghost come. Let the signal be healed. Let those that are bound be set free now. We have prayed for the meetings. We have fasted for the meetings. We have prepared for the meetings. What were we preparing for? We were preparing for people to be saved. What were we praying for? We were praying for the sick to be healed. What were we praying for? What were we fasting for? Now, the hour has come. Father, the hour has come. Let me tell you, people have gone for days without food. Some have gone without water. Some have paid all what they had for these meetings. What for? For somebody to receive the Holy Ghost. For somebody to have a child. For somebody to have marriage. For somebody 
to have a job, for somebody to have a good life, for somebody to have a car, for somebody to have a house, for somebody to have a good wife, for somebody to have a good husband, for somebody to have it well, for somebody to receive their healing. If you are here sick today, it has been prayed for. If you are here hungering and thirsty for the Holy Ghost, it has been fasted for. It has been prayed for. It has been prayed for. It has been prayed for. Your desire has been prayed for. Your desire has been fasted for. Your desire, a preparation, has been made. The chairs have been arranged. The lights are on. The generator is there. The music is there. The preachers are there. The singers are there. The lights are there. The preacher is here. And God is here. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'll be there. If he is here, Father, let the fire fall. Father, let the sick be healed. Father, let people receive their needs. You can receive whatever you want now. You can receive whatever you want now. Even now, even now, even now, even now, even now, even now. The order is repaired. The order, everything is in place. Everything is in place for you to get what you want. Everything is in order for you to get what you want. Whatever need you have, things have been put in place. I said things have been put in place. Things have been put in place. Things have been put in place. Everything is under control now. Father, 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 Jesus, Holy Ghost, Jesus. Jesus, your people are here, your people, your people, your children. Come near, come near, come near. The fire is about to fall. Come close, come to the altar, come to the altar. Elijah said, come to the altar, come to the altar. Come to the heart of the Lord. Come to the heart of the Lord. Come to the heart of the Lord. Why was he bringing them near? To catch the anointing. To see what God was about to do. Father. 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 You know what? It never took him time. Why? It took him time to repair the order. It took us time to dress like women. It took us time to be baptized correctly. It took us time to live a Christian life. It took us time to live like Christians. It took us time to believe the message. It took us time, we came from far to believe the message. We came from far to live worldliness. We came from far to live worldly music. We came from far to live beer. We have come from far to live smoking. We have come from far to live a doubtry. We have come from far to save the Lord. We have come from far to believe the message of the hour. We have come from far. We have come from far. We left denominations. What have we done? What has happened in this day? Elijah has come in this generation. And when Elijah came, what did he do? He started by repairing the altar. Unto what were you baptized? He started baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. He started telling sisters how to dress. What was Elijah doing? The same spirit of Elijah, the same spirit which was working in Elijah the Tishbite, came in this day to wake upon another man of God by the name of William Marion Branham under the anointing of Elijah the prophet of old. Started by doctrine. Started by lining how preachers should preach. Started by telling you, Father is not a name. Son is not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name. The name to be baptized is the Lord Jesus Christ. The name to pray for the sick is the Lord Jesus Christ. What was he doing, brother? He was repairing the altar. 
that have been broken through the seven church ages. They have been serving God. They have been doing things. Cancer could not be healed. They have been preaching, but people were not saved. They have been going to church. People are not receiving the Holy Ghost. They have been coming. They have been bishops. They have been cardinals. They have been popes. They have been great men of God. But still, people were not coming up to be Christians. Then Elijah came. And said, you have heard your time. You have heard your time. You have heard your time. And the Bible says, there shall be light in the evening time. What time did Elijah sacrifice? At the evening time. At the time of the evening sacrifice. Here we are in the end time. Here we are. At the evening time. At the sacrifice of the evening. Someone say amen to that. Can't you see the spirit of Elijah? Can't you see the pattern there? Can't you see the pattern repeating? Can't you see the pattern there? The repairing of the altar for the fire of God to come down and consume the sacrifice. Can't you see the pattern? Paul came, saw people without the Holy Ghost. He said, unto what were you baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. He said, no, that altar needs to be repaired. You have to be baptized correctly. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the promise of the Holy Ghost. The moment they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, they never struggled. They never cut themselves. They never beat at the wall to receive the Holy Ghost. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall receive. I'm already through for tonight. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm just trying to remind you. Right now, there's nothing that can stop you from receiving whatever you want. I said there's nothing. Nothing that can stop you now. Maybe you didn't hear it. I said right now, there's nothing anymore that can stop you. Because what you have been hindering you, you have repaired the old. You have done what it takes for you to receive your heart's desires. That's why I'm saying I've come to the end of my sermon. I'm actually now waiting for you. I'm now waiting for you. I'm waiting for the sick to start giving testimonies that I have come here sick, but thank God I'm healed. You can start changing gears now. There's nothing, there's nothing that can stop it from happening. I said there's nothing that can stop it from happening. There's nothing that can stop it from happening. Whatever you want to happen, whatever you want it to happen, there's nothing that can stop it from happening. There's nothing that can stop your promotion. There's nothing that can stop you. If you want to change your job, there's nothing that can stop it. You can go and change your job. There's nothing that can stop it from happening. Elijah just came. He watched them from morning right up to the late afternoon. They screamed. They did everything. Elijah was very much aware. As long the altar is not repaired, as long the 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel are not in place, nothing will happen. So he was just looking. He said... Maybe you need to lift your voices a bit. 
That's where you see some people sometimes. They start to pray and they jump. It's not in that. Most of the times. You can beat the wolf. You can scream. You can shout. Then he said, maybe your Lord has visited to David. You can, you, can, you can call him loudly. Maybe he's gone to Zimbabwe. They did it until they started cutting themselves. Elijah was just observing and he saw where the problem was. Then he said, friends, let's be honest and just. I think you've had enough time. Solomon has said, time and chance happeneth to all. The rest is not to the swift or a bread to men of wisdom. But time and chance happeneth to all. He said, can I also have also, just the few minutes that are left, can I come in? The few minutes that are left. And also, I'm just alone. You are 400. It's not in numbers. So don't wait until this war is packed with people for you to receive what you want. You have no excuse. There are people who start to say, hey, we really rejoiced. He started rejoicing now. You know, the prophet in the message, Shalom, he said, I like cottage house prayer meetings where I can have a feeling one to another, where we, we have contact one with another. Not really preaching stadiums. The prophet could never change his sermons and titles and inspirations. Whether there are five people, he preached the same. I can preach this to a million audience or to 2,000 people or to 100. To me, it doesn't make, that doesn't make no difference. So he says, call loudly. They cut it themselves. Nothing happened. He said, okay, let me come in. He started taking stones. And every stone was representing each tribe. Twelve tribes of Israel put their land, took the wood, arranged them nicely. He said, bring water, make the trenches there. They brought the water. He said, do it again. They did it the second time, the third time. Then when all was done, that's where he came to say, and it came to pass. And Elijah said unto all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, whom the word of the Lord came to, and with the stones. Then he says, and I want to go in the water, I want to skip there. Then he began to say, on verse 36, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, God of Abraham. Was he cutting himself? Was he screaming? No. He said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day. And it will be known this time. It's going to be known that you are a Christian. It is going to be known that you are a believer. It's going to be known that you are a child of God. I'm not joking with my words. I know what I'm talking about. I say it's going to be known all over the place that you are a daughter of God. That you are a son of God. That you are a believer of the message of the hour. 
that what you believe you have come by the pillar of fire is going to be known in this day, is going to be known in this generation that there's a people, a peculiar people, this is going to be known in South Africa. It's going to be known. Some will ask, how did that happen? And you say, God did it for me. Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant. Do you hear the prayer? Let it be known that you are God and I am thy servant. And that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me that these people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back to Pentecost. That thou hast turned their heart. This is why you see Elijah again in this day he have come with a ministry of turning the hearts of the children back to the fathers. This Elijah he had to turn their hearts back to believe in God. They had been taken away from God's commandments by Ahab who had married Jezebel. Their hearts had been turned away from God by Ahab who had been married this woman who was not a Christian, who was not in the line of God's duties, in the line of God's statutes and judgments. And Elijah came and said, let it be known that you have turned their hearts. They will know that the Lord is God and they will serve you with their pure hearts. They will serve you in truth and in spirit. God wants to be worshipped and those that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. We cannot remain between two opinions. If God be the healer, let him heal you. If God be the deliverer, let him deliver you. If God can bless. I don't want it to be a theory. I want him to bless me today. I want him to provide not because I've got a good job. Not until I have a good job. Because I want it to be known that it's the Lord who has done it. Not my job. Not my certificates. Not my degrees. Not my PhDs. But let it be known that the Lord has done this. Let it be known that the Lord is God. Let it be known that God is Jehovah Jireh. Let it be known that God is Jehovah Rapha. Let it be known. Let it be known, my brother. Let it be known. Let it be known that God can provide. Let it be known that God can fill with the Holy Ghost. I want to be so full. I want to receive the Holy Ghost in power. I want to receive the Holy Ghost until I'll become a testament. Until everyone will go home talking about my experience. Let it be known that God can baptize with the Holy Ghost. Let it be known that there's a church without spot or ring. Let it be known that there's a little flock somewhere. Let it be known that God, let it be known that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Let it be known that God still opens the blind eyes. When we are doing all these things, according to his word. We are dressing according to his word. We have done everything according to his word. We are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have married in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are believing in the same God, the one, the same yesterday, the Jehovah of the Old Testament, who is the Jesus of the New Testament. We don't believe in three gods. Let it be known that we believe in one God. Let it be known that God in sundry times spoke to the fathers by the prophets, but in these days, he has spoken to us by his son, Jesus Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let it be known that all that was in God was poured into Christ. Let it be known that all that was in Christ was poured into the church. Let it be known that death is no longer in heaven. Let it be known that death is right here. It will be known. They are going to know it. They are going to know it. They are going to know it. We are in a showdown season. I want to challenge your situation. We are in a showdown season. I want to start by challenging your condition. We are in a showdown situation. 
I want to start by challenging what you left at your house. We are in a showdown moment. I want to challenge that disease in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to challenge it today. If God be the healer, let him start by me. If God be the provider, let him start by me. If God be the savior, let him start by me and my children. If there's still the Holy Ghost, I want to be the first one. If there's a refilling of the Holy Ghost, I want to be the first one in these meetings. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want to be the first one in these meetings. I want to start these meetings. I want to start giving a testimony. You'll be the first one. Someone went to look for Welsh Reviver and he met Welsh Reviver. Someone will be looking for Takane Reviver. You are the Takane Reviver. You are the Tudura Reviver. Come on, manifest God. Come on, manifest the power of healing. Come on, manifest the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. People are looking for the manifestation of the sons of God. We are the people. We are the people. When they see the flyer, they are looking for the manifestation of the sons of God. You know who they are going to see? They are going to see you. I am manifesting God. I am manifesting Jesus. I am manifesting the power of the Holy Ghost. You manifest the power of the Holy Ghost. You manifest God where you are. You manifest the Holy Ghost. You manifest God right there. As the prophet was talking about how squirrels were spoken into existence, Sister Hetrad says, no, there's a crisis here. Said, Brother Branham, that's nothing but the truth. The power that he created the squirrel out there came filled the house. The prophet said, Sister Hetrad, you have done so well. Do you know your amens can bring God down? Do you know God You know why the Holy Ghost is not yet here? He's waiting for your amen. He's waiting for your hallelujah. He's waiting for your hallelujah. There's a hallelujah that can bring God down. There's an amen that can bring God down. There's a hallelujah. There's a worship. There's a praise. There's a spontaneous praise. There's a perfect faith. There's a hallelujah that can bring the Holy Ghost. I tell you in the name of Jesus Christ, there's an amen that can bring God down. There's an amen that can bring God on the scene. Maybe it's your amen. Maybe it's your hallelujah. Maybe it's your jumping up. Maybe it's your screaming. Maybe it's your lifting up of your hand that can bring God down. Maybe it's my preaching that can bring God down. Maybe it's your jumping up that can bring God down. Maybe it's your clapping of hands that can bring God down. Maybe it's your worship that can bring God down. Come on, somebody bring God down. Someone bring God here. Someone bring God here. Someone bring God here. Someone bring God here. It was the prayer of a Jemima that brought Elijah. It was the prayer of a woman. It was the prayer of a woman. Don't wait for someone. Don't wait for someone. You may be too little, but your hallelujah may be so be pleasing to God. You may be so little, but maybe your amen is pleasing to the Almighty. Can I hear amens here? Can I hear hallelujahs here? Can I hear hallelujahs here? Can I hear hallelujahs here? Can I hear amens here? That's nothing but the truth. That's nothing but the truth. Can I tell you something? That I hear the Holy Ghost is telling me, your desire is in your amen. Your request is in your hallelujah. Your amen. The salvation of your children are in your amens. The healing of your body is in your amen. Your car that you're praying for is in your amen. The house you've been praying for is in your amen. You amen the word and receive your desire. You amen the word and receive your house. You amen the word and I give it to you. You amen it. You say nothing but the truth. You amen the word. Your request is in your amen. Your job is in your amen. If you keep your amen, you are keeping back your, your job. If you hold your amen, you are holding your blessing. If you release your amen, you release your blessing. Release your amen. Release your amen. Release your amen. 
Release your amen. Release your amen. Release. Oh, come on, church. Release your amen. 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 You want good results at school? Release your amen. And I release your results. You want a good husband? Release your amen. And I release your husband. You want a good car? Release your amen. And I give you a good car. You want a house? Release your amen. And I give you a house. Come on, release your amen. Come on, release your amen. Release your amen. You want the Holy Ghost? Release your amen. Release your hallelujahs. I say release your amen. Release your amen. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I'm not playing church. I'm not playing church. The salvation of the right sons were held in her amen. The moment she released her amen, the boys came right there. The moment she said, that's nothing but the truth, the Holy Ghost came. This is coming fresh from heaven. Don't hold your blessing. Release it. Release it. Release it. Release it. Release your blessing by your amen. Release it. Release it. You know where it is. It's right here. When you say amen, and I'll give it to you. When you say that's nothing but the truth, and I say therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ, you want your children to receive the Holy Ghost, you amen the word, and I give them to you. You want your husband to come to church, release your amen. Release your amen. Release your amen. And I give you your husband. Release your amen. And I give you your husband. In the name of Jesus Christ. December may be too far. December may be too far. You want your mother to be saved. You want your mother to be saved. Release your amen. And I give you your mother. In the name of Jesus Christ. I give you your mother in the faith. I give you your mother. In the name of Jesus Christ. Release your amen. 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 For the Bible says death and life lies under the power of your tongue. Healing and sickness lies under the power of your tongue. Coming to church by taxi lies under the power of your tongue. Renting in a one room lies under the power of your tongue. Coming to church without the Holy Ghost lies under the power. You tell God you want the Holy Ghost. You tell God you want the Holy Ghost and he'll give you the Holy Ghost. You tell God you want a refilling and he will refill you with the Holy Ghost. You tell God you want a revival. You say amen to the revival. You shout hallelujah. You shout hallelujah. You shout hallelujah. You shout hallelujah. You shout hallelujah there. You shout hallelujah. Father, let the fire fall. Father, let the Holy Ghost come and minister the needs of your children now. You can start indicating now. I'm turning left. Release it. Release it. Release it. Come on, church. Come on, church. You want a baby? Release. Yes, you are almost there now. Keep on going. You are almost there now. You are almost there now. You are getting there now. You are getting there now. The house you are praying for is not very far. It's not very far. I'm telling you. The Holy Ghost is telling me that it's not very far. 
You are holding it as you are holding your amens. When Gabriel came and stood before Mary there, he said, you are highly favored. She was already chosen. She was already highly favored among all women. And she was already pronounced blessed among all women. She was already told, you are going to have a son. All that was already said. And she was holding the conception by holding her amen. So she said, how can these things be? Seeing I know not a man. Then the angel said, the Holy Ghost will overshadow me. And that power of the highest will come upon me. The moment she said, let it be unto me according to thy word. Conception. Right there. Let it be unto me according to thy word. The moment you say that, that's when you take conception of your desire. I'm done with that devil. I'm done with that evil spirit. I now understand why you don't have a job. Amen. So you can help yourself by releasing that amen. What do you want? Can you say amen? Amen. Can you say, let it be unto me according to thy word. Come here, sister. Come here. I give you children in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, one time we were in church, back home, there's a sister who could not have children. So, as I was preaching, I began to talk about God gives children. God gives, and I was talking to her indirectly. So, Samo, I think I gave a testimony of, yes, I gave a testimony of this other sister who had been witched by her aunt and she could not have children. So, when we were praying, she manifested demons and the aunt began to speak from her. And she began to say, Chinamaso, that's why you see we don't come to your church because we, we know you. So I said, but leave this girl, this woman to have children. And we prayed. You know, the Holy Ghost began to pick one by one what had been done to her. So when I shared that, I, I, I stepped from the pulpit. Then I went to take that baby and lift him in the air and say, you see, this boy, that's how he came. The mother had been wished so that she could not have children. But here he is. Here is the child. So I took that child and I handed over to the barren sister. Then the Holy Ghost struck her and she fell down by the back and the baby was here and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, the way the baby is sitting there on her tongue, the child is, will be there. Hand her over the baby. 
Can you give her the baby? Hand her over the baby. Nurse the baby. Rejoice with the baby. Oh, come on, friends. Don't be slow in how to understand spiritual things are spiritually designed. Come on, church. Are you spiritual here? You didn't see me here dancing and, and nursing the baby here. You didn't see me here. What was I doing? You think I was just preaching? You think I'm just telling stories? You think I'm just... Come on, friends. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Sister, dance with the baby. Nest the baby. Rejoice with your baby. And your baby is coming in the name of Jesus Christ. So that sister... When she was laying there on the floor with the baby here, she began to speak in tongues. The power of the Holy Ghost was upon her. The power of the Holy Ghost came upon her. The power of the Holy Ghost is here. 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 Yes, the power of the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The Holy Ghost will overshadow you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I said the power of the Holy Ghost is here. The power of the Holy Ghost is here. The power of the Holy Ghost is in the building. The power of the Holy Ghost. You can catch your conception. Whatever need you have, receive your conception. Whatever desire you have, the power of the Holy Church, I say, the power of the Holy Ghost is here. Thank you, Jesus. You think I'm talking stories here? Yeah. Right now, that sister is pregnant. Right now. The time is almost here. One time I went to a certain place to preach. There was a sister who was sitting by the window. And she had one son and was trying to have other children. She was failing. To take conception without using family planning then i was walking along the building to come to the pastor's office as i came straight by the window outside there was such a presence that went through the window to where she was sitting and she began to stagger when i passed it stopped so i came to the pastor's office when the time came for the minister to come to the pulpit the moment I opened the door there to come to the pulpit, that presence came again by the door and went right straight to where she was sitting. And as I was preaching like that, there were waves of the Holy Ghost that could go. Then after service, I prayed for her. About six months later, we visited the same church and I saw her with a big tongue on her. She said, Pastor... The very day that I came for the service and you prayed for me, that's the day that I took conception. Let me read you a quote. Let me read you a quote. The Holy Ghost is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power from the highest will come upon you. And I rebuke that barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ. I condemn it and cast it away. Go and have children. The meetings have started well.
And if you are here, sister, you still want more children, I give them to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And now this may just choke you to death. But did you know that men that are sons of God are amateur gods? <laughs> this may choke you to death. But do you know? Did you know that men that are sons of God are amateur gods? How many ever know that? How many know that Jesus said so? The Bible, Jesus said, did you, did your law say itself that you are gods? And if you call them gods, which God said in Genesis 2, that they were gods because they were had full domain, domain over the dominion of the world. He gave him dominion over all things and he lost his godship. He lost his sonship. He lost his domain. And Satan took it over. But brother, we are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Who will come back and take it over again. We are here to take it over again. We are taking it over from where Adam left it. To take it over again. Waiting for the fullness of time. When the pyramid gets up to the top. When the full sons of God will be made manifested. When the power of God will work out. Hallelujah. And will take every power that Satan got away from him. Yes, say it belongs to him. He is the logos that went out of God. That is true. That was the son of God. Then he made men. If they call those who the word of the Lord came to. The prophets. If they call them gods. Who the word of God came to. And God said so himself that they were gods. He told Moses. I've made you a God. And made Aaron your prophet. Amen. Whew. Then he says, oh my, and I may act like a religious crank, but I'm not. Oh, when your eyes can come open and see those things. All right, he made men a God, a God in his domain, and his domain goes from sea to sea, from shore to shore. He has the control of it. And when Jesus came, being the one God without sin, he proved it. When the winds blowed, he said, peace, peace. To you. Peace be to you. Amen. And when the tree, he said, No man eat from thee. Verily I say unto you, that's little gods. If you say to this barrenness, if you say to this mountain, if you say to this cancer, if you say to this sugar diabetes, if you say to this jobless condition, if you say to this mountain, be moved. And don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you have said will come to pass. You can have what you have said. Go right back to Genesis, to the original. What is it? Now, the world and nature is groaning, crying, everything is moving. What? For the manifestation of the sons of God. When the true sons, born sons, filled sons, speak and their word is back. I believe we are on the border of it right now. Yes, sir. Say to this mountain, let it be so. Brother, I desire so and so. A certain thing done. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I give it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. What do you desire, brother? I give it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. What do you desire, brother? I give it to you. This is the manifestation of the sons of God. It's a brother giving a brother their hearty desire. It's a sister giving a sister their hearty desire. It's the minister of the gospel 
giving the congregation their heart's desire. And I'm giving you all your heart's desire. I'm giving you children in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, say speak my Lord and he will speak. And I say he will speak. He will speak. Then he says, there is a manifestation. Oh, brother, my crops are burning up out yonder. I haven't had many rain. I will send you rain. <laughs> I like the way he says, I will send you rain. What should I send to you? Eh? The finances are burning. I'm sending them to you. You know, we, we were in Namibia when we left that, the meetings here. We went to Namibia there. I tell you things were happening. There's a sister who had wrote things in January. Like a, a note and listed her desires for 2022. Amen. And she had come with the paper to church. So I was just preaching from then. I said, I'm giving you that list that you wrote in January. So I'm told that uh, that list now, she's just ticking. The Holy Ghost could come and it dis things. There's a brother who manifested demons and they were praying for him. I was just in the pulpit and the Holy Ghost came to the pulpit and said, go there and rebuke such and such and such and such because he did this and that. That's how those demons came unto him. And I went, I told the brothers, I said, rebuke this and that from this one. So I stood up, I went to the pastor, I said, pastor, this brother did this and that. He said he came last week and he was telling the same thing. <laughs> the pastor, they were invited me. He had just resigned and told me that I want to quit as a teacher. So he quit it. So when he left, but he still wanted the job. But he had just left the job. You know, a teacher there in Namibia, it's a good job. It's different from teacher somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I will not tell you where. They ain't good money to have. So he had just resigned. So uh, we actually drove together. He said, Pastor, I'm going to the ministry there to, to sign my papers for my man to come. So he, he did the process. Just after the meetings, he was called by another school, a same government that he had resigned from. So I asked him, I said, how much was your party? He said, around, before the taxi, around 600,000 rice. That's quite some money for us. Let's, let's just check how much it is in Zimbabwe, in the US. Let's just check how much it is. It's quite some money, brother. That's uh, 35,000 US. So if the tax maybe you get around 30, that's, 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 that's something. Then, then he just went for an interview. He, he was telling me yesterday, he said there were about 10 people or so, and he passed. I said, they are taking you back. He said, yes. I said, but what about that, uh, that package? He said, that one is already in the account. God have got ways.
wanted to tell you something. Which the Lord spoke to me concerning. Pastor says now, the man is already in the county. I think it's in this other section. It has been released from the government. What is it? God has got more than a thousand ways. We, we just want to see this weekend which one is he willing to use. But you've got more than what? Thousand ways to fix your problem. We can have even electricity of our own which is not connected nowhere. Let me just tell you a story. You know, I'm now believing the supernatural until it can leave you scratching your head. The thing that I have seen the Lord doing, I can't doubt him anymore. We're preaching, when we came here, that was when 11 August, even. Yeah, we came here 11 August, then 12 August we went to Rustenburg. 13, 14, 15, I think. Then we came on the day we are on now, I think on the 20, on the 19 or something. But when we went to Rustenburg, that was on Friday, I was preaching. And uh, the people were ready, I think. There was a sister who was to my right. I think the way this brother is, the one there. She was stone blind. If you say stone blind word, then the eye was like a stone completely off. It was less than 10 minutes of my preaching. And I began to talk about testimonies of blind eyes. And how the Mzawayo people who were wearing spectacles when I was talking about the healing of eyes. And I said, even specs, it's a sign of blindness. There was a wave that I literally felt coming into the church. I said, right now I receive the healing of your eyes. Some people could literally see eyes popping out in their specs. Then they had to remove them. Some handed me over, some they just throw them to the pool. So the moment I was just sharing that, and this sister is blind. You know, she just stood up and followed where the voice was coming from. And she came straight to the pulpit. And she just came and shook my hand. Right there, she began to sing. Then, but it was not clear. That was Friday. Saturday, we came. The eyesight increased. Sunday, perfectly gone. There was a couple. The pastor says he's coming. I think he's here somewhere. He may be watching this service right now. There was a couple there at Rustenburg. When they were still in Zim, they had a boy child and was born disabled. But the mother and father didn't realize that there was something wrong with the child. So it took a grandmother after they have taken the boy from the bathroom, that the boy was not normal. So the boy was just running up and down without clothes on. So he went close to the grandmother. I think she saw something queer that took the boy and looked at him. You know, this boy is not normal. He didn't have testicles. So the grandmother thought they were up away from the shed. So the father took the boy, looked at him, said, ah, 
doctor, you never noticed. The mother said, you never noticed. They took the boy to the doctor. The doctor checked and they thought the testicles were up. And those, uh, what do you call them, the tubes? Doc, what do you call them? Yeah, the tubes. That's the right name, Nick. You see? Amen. Yeah. So, when the doctor checked, he said, actually, the boy doesn't have testicles. There was nothing in the tube. But anyway, he had to do an operation. But they said, okay, let's do it later. They removed it from June to June. And they were prolonging. He would do it. Maybe he would rest. And he was just sleeping. I said, I want you to touch where your problem is. Right now. So the mother stood up, ran from where she was sitting. She looked for the boy and she just went and put her hand in the pants of the little boy and touched the tubes. Left him. She came. She sat down. After some minutes, she went, she took the boy, went outside with her to the bathroom, took off the pants. The testicles were there. Were oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, they are checked. to ask you a question. When is that going to happen? And who is going to announce that it has happened? That's what my question to you is. When that person comes to announce it, let no ear fail you. The prophet, I think we, we need to go home now. We need to go. This is 10 o'clock. <laughs> the prophet, by vision, was told to go to a certain place. And he had to go into a certain house where there was a child who was sick. When he stood by the door, he asked the mother, say, you have got a sick child, isn't it? Then the mother said, are you a doctor? <laughs> He said, no, I'm not a doctor. I'm a preacher. I pray for the sick. But do you have a sick child inside this house? She said, yes. He said, can I come in? Because I am here to pray for your child. How many are sick? We are here to pray for you. <laughs> but today, Today I'm not going to pray for anyone. I'm just saying, Father, let the sick be healed. <laughs> How many have got problems here? We are here for you. I've come all the way from Zimbabwe. <laughs> for your problems. Do you have problems? <laughs> so the prophet says, you have got a sick child is it? inside the house. <laughs> I'm here to pray for your child. <laughs> Can I come in? She was looking for what? For a doctor. But God, you've got more than a thousand ways to fix your problems. <laughs> so the prophet went, prayed for the child. As he came, there was a cave, I think, which took him down to the shops and he went into a 10 cent store. Now, in a vision, he had seen a clock on the wall. And in a vision, the clock was ticking. And in a vision, the clock was 10 minutes to 3. So he walks in the shop. As he's waiting to go where he was going, he began to look for certain things there. Then he heard 
the taking of what? You can hear it. The taking of what? You know where is it taking to? To your blessing. Oh, those with cloaks, watches, look. What is it? It's ticking. Eh? Or is it even ten to? Oh. It's ten to. So it's ticking. But what I just want you to know is the clock is what? Which means your time for you to come out of your problem is nine. As the clock is ticking. Then he looked up. Then he saw ten to three. And he knew it's time to go out. There's somebody outside at this time supposed to come out from a wheelchair. The someone at this time is supposed to come out from a wheelchair. The someone at this time is supposed to come out from blindness. The someone at this time is supposed to come out from barrenness. The someone at this time. The clock is ticking. So he went out. And he stood there. He heard again what he heard in the vision. The sound of a moving wheelchair. Moving towards where he was. And there was a man. You know, this came to me when I told you, have you ever read? Have you ever read? That missing limbs shall be restored. So on the wheelchair, there was a man sitting with the Bible right on his left. Then they came near and the prophet started, how do you do, sir? He said, fine. And the nurse is pushing the wheelchair. We thank God for good nurses, for good doctors. But there are some things that they will just say, this, we can't help any further. She was doing a job. Say, how do you do, sir? Said, I'm doing well. Say, what's that on your lap? I'm coming to you now. How many have come with Bibles? I want you to hold them. Said, what is that that you're holding? He said, the Bible. He said, do you believe it? He said, yes. Then he said, have you ever read in there where Jesus heals the sick? To those that say they are sick. <laughs> have you ever read in there where Hannah was given a child? Have you ever read in there where Elizabeth was given a child? You see where the story is going? Have you ever read in there? He's asking the man with his Bible in a wheelchair and said, do you believe that book? He said, yes. And you said, have you ever read in there where Jesus used the sick? He said, yes. Then he said, therefore, according to what you read, therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Then he looked at the nurse, and the nurse said, He can't walk. He said, You look at me, don't look at the nurse. You look at me, you look at me, you look at me, you look at me. I've got some what to tell you, I've got something to tell you. Have you ever read in there? Have you ever read in there in the spoken word? Where the prophet said, missing limbs will be restored. 
If you ever read in there where he says you shall say, brother, I will send you rain. Have you ever read in there? So if it's there, therefore, I am sending you rain. Okay. Last time when I was here, you can put me on record. I said, the minister of the gospel is a higher than any office in the land. And the people were under fear of going back to Zim. Without purpose. Then I said, God can change the situation in this nation that you not go back home in December. How many remember me saying that? So what happened? Who spoke it? Let me move it again from June. <laughs> you don't believe. If you don't believe, by next month you'll be zipped there. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, you pack bags. But if you believe, here to stay. You can cause things that are signed to be reversed. Can I tell you something? Do you know every president that comes on the city, they've got power to do amnesty to prisoners. He can just come and say, this one, this one, this one, this one. Open the prison doors. Let them go now. Even if they've killed the hundred. So if a president who have just come there on one term maybe he's given five years to rule. He have got the power by the constitution of that nation and say this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Let them go. The, those guards officers they don't have any power anymore over these prisoners. It's presidential amnesty. Now, my office is higher than the president. Do you know that? By the powers and the supreme authority from glory given to me and minister to me by the Holy Ghost. I set you free. I set you free. Go home free. Go and present the word. To the prison officer. Then the nurse says, He can't walk. He says, Take me at my word. Look at me. He says, Who are you? He said, That doesn't matter. I say, Stand up! Rise up! Can I tell you, don't ask me who are you. That doesn't matter. Rise up. And you are still sitting. Rise up and receive your desire in the name of Jesus Christ. One time I was preaching in church, in our church. When I shared this testament, I said, rise up. So people kept on sitting. I said, sister, rise up. I said, rise up. Run out from that chair. 
then when I said that the Holy Ghost pointed me to a certain sister and said, you are talking to that one. Then I said, young sister, little sister, rise up! Still she could not catch it. Then I said, Lord, what should I do? The Holy Ghost says, call her by name. I said, sister, son and so. I said, rise up! And the demon came out right there. Father, let the fire fall in these meetings. Father, let the sick be healed in these meetings. Father, let the Holy Ghost come let there be such a move. Let there be such a work, Lord, of the Holy Spirit. Preparations have been made. Lord, things have been put to place. Ministers have traveled. Your people are ready. Prayers, fastings, money contributions, Lord. It has been done. What else? Heavenly Father which is left except for the fire to fall. To consume our sacrifices. Oh, what a mortal can do. We have done it, Father. We further wait upon you. We want to testify and say, Lord, we are going to see holy rollers in this place. We are going to see visions, prophecies, signs and wonders healings and miracles they are going to take place we are waiting we have been praying we have been fasting and father we have just come tonight to lay a foundation as we start these meetings right up to Sunday we know something great is taking place something great is in the making we thank you, Father. We pray for the services of tomorrow. Let the barren receive children. Let the blind receive their sight, the cripple walk. The visible audience and those online. Let each one, oh God, receive their satisfying portion. Let it be, for we have done all according to thy word. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Allow me to read this quotation once more. I may not find time to read it. Then we, we go home. But I want you to know we are done with the devil. He says, I will send you rain in the name of the Lord Jesus. There she will come. Oh, waiting, groaning, all nature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. God ordained it at the beginning. He gave men the domain. He gave Jesus Christ and Jesus gave it in his name. With the assurance, ask the Father anything in my name and I will do it. Oh, brother Palmer, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The position, the church. As I say, the book of Ephesians is the book of Joshua and Joshua placing the people where they belong. Now, they wouldn't stand still and put Ephraim here and over on Manasseh's land and this one would come back fasting and chewing. How are they ever going to get along? When one saying, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Pentecost, I'm oneness, I'm fullness, whatever. How are you going to do it? Stand still. God is waiting to place his church. The sons and daughters of God. God, let me live to see it, is my prayer. So close till I can just feel it with my hands almost look like. It's right there. That's what I have longed to see. Waiting for that time when uh, when walk down the street there, laying a cripple, laying there from his mother's womb, silver and gold have I none. Oh, 
waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Hallelujah. When God will make himself known, when they will stop sickness, they will stop cancer, they will stop diseases. You think cancer is something. The Bible, there is coming a time when men will rot right in their flesh and the buzzards will eat off their carcasses before they even die. Cancer is toothache to what's coming. You, you see corona, I think I've got three terrible cases of corona when it was on its peak where people could call me and say, Pastor, I am dying and you could see that they are dying. I had no choice than to just lay hands brother <laughs> you could not even tell your wife the other time i went in the room and she was dying and i told the brother the other one that i went with i said brother you just sit in the car i'm going to where death is so i walked in the room there and she was going when put my hands there i said in jesus name amen and she lived the neighbor, he had sugar, high blood pressure, and corona came. Once you had those things, you could not last. The man just knelt down with tears running. And I began to think of, I have children, I've got a wife there. Then I began to think when the prophet walked into that room there where there was uh, this contagious disease. And he said, if I don't have faith enough to pray for him and come out without the disease, I have no right of getting in there. Brother, the time of Corona, that's where you needed to know who, who was a, a believer of divine healing or not. <laughs> that thing could not spare. It didn't care who you were, whether you're a preacher, whether you just have to be sure it was God leading you. Do you know there are churches that sh shut it down completely? because of coronavirus then the prophet said they will stop it then let me read the last one here it's in the message I think the, the invisible union of the bride now before closing one time I was up in Glacier National Park we had heard all day long that they had all it a for a glacier fire, glacier fire that was going to fall at night. What what is the actual pronunciation of this? Glacier fire that was going to fall at night. So the people was busy all day long getting that thing ready because they was going to pour that fire out. That right. They put a liquid fire falls like a great glacier of water but looked like a rainbow almost when it comes out of that fire falling out of this glacier all around through the park wife and i and children walked around through the day we wanted to stay to see that fire the exhibition you stay there on the altar to see that fire you stay in this message to see that fire you stay in Christ to see that fire. So it was promised us. How many can say hallelujah? It was promised us. It shall come to pass in the last days. I poured my spirit upon all flesh. It was promised us that we would see it. And would witness it. Again, they say they have it ever through the summer seasons and so forth. I said, well, we will be able to see it. Said, we promised it tonight. We are promised that. Said, they put up there, getting it ready now. After all, had been made ready for the event. That's what's taking place right now. All is made ready for the event. A church being pulled out for his name's sake. Taking his bride out from among the world. These denominations and all the world and the field and things of the world. Everybody, the event was made ready. Everybody was standing out. They said, now, keep watching. 
right up on top of the mountain there. I look up to the mountains. Keep watching, friends. From hence cometh my help. That's the way it's always come. That's the way it's to come this time. That's the way it always come. Not through a denomination. Never did God use a denomination. Never. The reformer goes forth. He gets the word of the Lord. And then when he dies, they build a denomination out of it. That's what the Pentecostals and all did. When the new issues and everything, that's just the way. That's the way the thing come out. A new word added and then they build a church out of it. Made a denomination, separated themselves. It yet to be that way. Pastor, come as I finish. Now, you can't beat, you can't beat nature. Nature falls in the same routine all the time. Stock, leaf, tassel, and so forth. Shock, then the wheat. Now notice, all was ready. Everything had been kindled and made ready. And everybody was standing out. I had my head sticking up. My arm around my wife. We was looking. And children standing there, all of us looking like that. My, it was something. Because we was expecting it. It was promised to us. I'm expecting something great. That has been promised to us. I'm expecting to see the cripple rising. I'm expecting to see the deaf receiving their hearing. More of the blind receiving their sight, the dumb speak. Amen! The word promises this. It shall come to pass before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come. Behold, I will send unto you Elijah the prophet. He shall turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers and the hearts of the children. It shall come to pass in the last days I will pour out my spirit from on high. The form and brighter rain shall come together in the last days. All these promises through the scriptures been given. We are looking upward. Watch at the true bride across the nation. This hour looking up church. He is coming one of these days. Just as sure as he comes the first time he is coming again. Get everything ready. Separate yourself from shock. Lay before the sun. Keep looking up. Be under expectation. I want to leave you with these words. Be under expectation. Something is fixing to happen this weekend. Be under expectation. Something great is coming your way. All at once, we had something from the top, the hill. A voice come down through the loudspeakers. Say it. All these are ready. Then this man is standing right there by my side. By me, he said, let the fire fall. Ah, come on, put your hands together. Don't be selfish until you can't even clap your hands in church. Don't be so mean I can't you until you can't say hallelujah. Hallelujah is for free. Amen is for free. Do you see where I get my inspiration? <laughs> Let me repeat that. All at once, we had something from the top, from the pulpit. From the top, the hear a voice come down through the speaker. Said, all oh, these are ready. Then this man is standing right there by my side. Said, let the fire fall. Here it come. Pouring down across that mountain. A glacier of fire and blaze. A leaking 
a sight to behold. You see what we are going to have this weekend? A sight to behold. You haven't seen nothing. I want to say to you, come and see. A sight to behold. There is going to have a happening of things here. A sight to behold. Then this man standing right there. Brother, let's get all things ready. For one of these days, the fire is going to fall. We are going up. Now let's get ready for the fire falling time. We are in the last days. We all know that. And we are ready for the coming of the Lord. The thing to do is separate yourself from all sin. Separate yourself from anything that pertains to the world. Don't love the world or the things of the world. Let no man by his creed deceive you. You stay right in the promise of God. The word of God. And that word, if it's a word for this day, God vindicates it so. If he doesn't, it's not the word for this day. Father, let the fire fall. God bless you, sons. Let's put our hands together. We can do better than that. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Friends, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that God is working. I want to tell you that God is here. And you will hear testimonies starting from this service. There are things that have been happening before these services the devil has been fighting for the pastor to come here and uh, preach like this I tell you it's a miracle the devil had tried to stop these things but I am here to say father let the fire fall let the sick be healed let the discouraged be encouraged let the blessings come let the barren conceive. Let the poor say I'm rich. Hallelujah. There are those that know. Last week on Thursday, the message that the pastor is preaching here was preached also by Pastor Garand. And uh, Pastor Chinamasa doesn't have that audio. I did not send it to him. And I didn't know what he was going to preach. And when I came here, I just said, Father, let the fire fall. So if it was accurate like that, I want to tell you one thing. As we are going out of that door, you are not going out the same. Something has happened. Something has happened already. The blessings of God has fallen. Something has already started happening. It will attract the eyes of the reporters. It will attract the eyes of the nation. It will attract everybody. That right at that meeting, where there were few people, God was in the midst, doing extraordinary things. I can tell you, I can tell you, that you have to believe. And if you believe, great things are going to happen. I know I have heard it somewhere that these meetings, the very ones that we are having here, I heard it somewhere that those that are going to believe, God is going to bless them. You believe over there, God is going to bless you. You believe over there, God is going to bless you. We don't even care about the time that we took. We are willing even to lose 
our deposit and whatever for the regulations so that someone can be blessed so that someone can be delivered God does great things in simplicity Sister Shinamasa, God bless you we are happy to have you here backing up the man of God she knows it means a lot saints on account of time I just want to close in prayer let's just bow our heads do you know that God has spoken this evening do you know that certain things have already been broken do you know that Satan didn't want these meetings to proceed and for you that have made those big sacrifices you are going to get a blessing as we are bowing our heads Lord Jesus I'm short of words sometimes as a minister you get to know of certain things you cannot speak about but Father while I'm here I know for a sure thing that your spirit is moving. I know that it was God speaking through his servant here. I know it is the time for the manifestation of the sons of God. It's the time for the fire to fall. Lord, in the quietness of things, these people that have come here, they didn't come to see a man. They didn't come because this is the best place to be. But something pulled them here. And they were here to show that the devil is defeated. Father, we know that you are doing great things in the congregation right now. We know that testimonies have already started working out. My God, as we go back home, may we go back rejoicing. Our amens were not in vain. Our fuel to come to the meeting was not in vain. Our preparation was not in vain. The generator was not in vain. The hard work in putting up the system was not in vain. It was for a sure blessing. Mighty God, as we are gathered here, getting ready to go, Father, these people are witnesses. When we shall come back and say, on that day, such and such a thing happened. On that day, God blessed us with our heart desires. Father, may you remember your servant. You know the sacrifices that he make. You know even, Father, the hurdles and the enemies that he had to fight. How demon powers were trying to stop him from coming to the pulpit. But Father, we have seen your grace. We have seen your spirit strengthening him so that he can be of service to us. Father, surely after such a sacrifice, we say let the fire fall. And indeed the fire has fallen. Indeed the chains are broken. Indeed diseases have flown away. Indeed our conditions are changed. Heavenly Father, may we come back tomorrow refreshed for another dose of the word. May you bless us, Father, as we come back tomorrow. Take us safely home. We know the devil is not happy. May you carry every child of God here safely back to their homes, eternal Father. May the dirty hands of the devil leave the children of God. May the dirty hands of the devil never come near the children of God until we come back, Heavenly Father, to give you the glory and the honor. Mighty God, we know that as men, we can say something. But Father, when you come and you make a statement, when you manifest what is written in the word, when you manifest what is written in the spoken words, then the mouths of the critics will be shut. Father, let it be so. The fire has fallen. The miracles are happening. Testimonies are brewing. Father, we say, may your name be blessed. As we close the meeting today, we pray may you help us and undertake for us in a special way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you, saints. Thank you so much for coming. I know that being the first day, we were trying to put things together, others getting lost, 
uh, the engineers are trying to understand the building. It's their first time here. But we want to appreciate our sound engineers for the hard work that they put in here. Amen. I think they were here four hours before the start of the meeting. Running cables everywhere. We appreciate you. And uh, they told me that even tomorrow, the sound is going to be better and better. Amen. Let's put a hand together for them. Amen. Want to appreciate Pastor Chinamasa. Want to say may God restore the virtue that has gone forth. And how many of us are going back home holding their heart desire? Hallelujah. You see, when a person conceives, the result you touch it after nine months. Hallelujah. But certain blessings, it won't take nine months. Not many days hence. Not many hours hence. You will be holding your blessing. Hallelujah. I tell you, I have had the privilege of being so close when God is doing things. And I'm a witness that these were not stories that we were hearing. This is reality. We were hearing from our Theophan. We were hearing from the throne of God. And there will be substance testimonies that will come out of this meeting. I am a testimony myself. You are going to be a testimony. You are going to be a testimony. God has already done great things. Pastor Garande, we're looking at each other as we see the men of God going court by court, scripture by scripture. What the pastor was preaching for us on a morning devotion. Even that quotation of the, uh, uh, the rainbow, uh, glacier, fire. That's what the pastor closed with. And they've never talked about it. And Pastor Chinamasa comes by inspiration. God doesn't do repetition. God doesn't do repetition. When God repeats something, he says, look at that. Because I'm going to do something great. God bless you. God bless you. Your hour has come. The fire of the Holy Ghost has come. Your hour of deliverance has come. Your hour of blessings has come. Your hour of breakthrough has come. As Brother Brian comes to give us a dismissal song, let's just stand and give a clap offering to the Lord. Hallelujah. As Brother Brian is coming, hallelujah, let's have a Bible offering. Hallelujah. Wave your Bible. Hallelujah. It is written in the Bible. I will grant your heart desires. It is written in the Bible that your, your healing lies in there. Hallelujah. The fire has fallen. I tell you, the devil did everything in the tricks in his books to stop this meeting. But the power of the Holy Ghost I tell you, if it was not the Holy Ghost, we won't be having a meeting like this. So, God has got something in store, special for you. Where is Brother Brian? I think you can give us a song. We are dismissed. We will allow the technical team to do whatever they do. But the brother is going to just sing a dismissal song for us. Let's greet while we are in here. Let's be careful when we are driving out. Maybe when we come uh, tomorrow, let's park in reverse. Amen. So that we don't uh, uh, endanger the little ones that will be running. Let's keep uh, our children safe so that we don't have any incident. Hallelujah. We want to be safe and we want to rejoice. And uh, tomorrow we will start uh, uh, very early. We want to make sure that at least by 7 o'clock the singing has started. Amen. But we understand and we are blessed and we have no complaint. God is wonderful. God bless you until we meet tomorrow. Amen. Amen. I don't know who we'll try a song that says, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed. I am blessed. I don't deserve it, but yet 
I am blessed. It seems like we don't know it, but we'll try it some other time. Let's sing. I don't know if uh, you know this one. My Bible and I, what a wonderful treasure. Amen. My Bible, my Bible, eh. my Bible, my Bible, eh. 